Today we're going to look at another book that we have in our Wake Library that we just got to honor our sweet Katie Rogers. So this is called Flowers Are Calling and Katie loved her flower garden um, and she loved birds and, and nature so I thought this was a good representation of that. This story is by Rita Gray and it's illustrated by Kennard Pack and what I think that she would really like about this story, um, what it's a, a story with wonderful uh, illustrations but it also throws in some facts about the flowers as we go through so it's a neat combination of uh, fiction and fact. Flowers are calling a little black bear. No, not a bear, he doesn't care. They're calling a butterfly to dip from the air. Flowers are calling a wet green frog. No, not a frog, she likes her soggy bog. They're calling a bumblebee to look near their log. Flowers are calling a porcupine. No, not a porcupine. She wouldn't take the time. They're calling a hummingbird to sip at their vine. So now we have some um, facts on the flowers. So we have Queen Anne's Lace. It says butterflies like a landing pad when they drink nectar. This is monk shoot. Monk shoot. Bumblebees are hefty enough to push deep inside a monk shoot flower where nectar is stored. And this is trumpet honeysuckle. Hummingbirds use their long tongues to reach the nectar hidden in deep tubular flowers and they hover as they drink. Flowers are calling a loud blue jay. No, not a jay, he wouldn't stay. They're calling a honeybee to fly their way. Flowers are calling a little moose. No, not a moose. What would be the use? They're calling a beetle to eat their pollen loose. Flowers are calling a rabbit to stop. No, not a rabbit. It's not their habit to call a rabbit. He might grab it. They're calling a bee, a bee fly to visit their spot. And there's the bee. We have an apple tree blossom. Honeybees help make many of the fruits, nuts, and vegetables we eat by pollinating fruit tree blossoms, such as the apple tree. There are also thousands of varieties of wild bees that help to make many of the foods we eat. And this is magnolia. Beetles have been visiting flowers for more than 100 million years. And this is violet. Bee flies look like bumblebees but have two wings instead of four. Like hummingbirds, they are able to hover, hover their furry bodies in the air as they drink the nectar. Flowers are calling a small brown snake. No, not a snake, for goodness sake. They're calling a pollen wasp with nectar to take. Flowers are calling a fat raccoon. No, not a raccoon. He doesn't care for white bloom or sweet perfume. They're calling a moth in the light of the moon. Flowers are calling a desert deer. No, not a deer, he can't even get near. They're calling a nectar bat to flap over here. So we have a blowout beard tongue. Pollen wasps, like bees, make loaves of nectar and pollen to feed their young. And this is Cardin cactus. Lesser, long-nosed bats have long tongues that can reach the nectar deep inside the bell-shaped flowers of the Cardin cactus. These cactus flowers unfurl for just one short night. And we have moonflower and Carolina sphinx moth. Sphinx, mo sphinx moths are expert flyers with very long tongues. Like cardin cactus, the blooms of, of moonflowers open for just one night and depend on the nighttime visits of moths for pollination. Flowers are calling a busy wren. No, not a wren. He's already seen them. They're calling some children to look again.
Look at a flower, what do you see? So we have a little fact here about color, pattern, and shape for flowers. Flowers that have daytime visitors tend to have bright colors so they can be easily found among all the green foliage. Flowers with nighttime visitors tend to be pale with a very sweet smell, making them easier to locate in the dark. Many insects can't see the color red and are drawn instead to yellows and blues. And this is about pattern. Many flowers use designs to help the pollinator find nectar right away. These designs are called nectar guides. How is the middle of your flower different from its outer part? Would these differences help a pollinator find nectar? And our last one is shape. The shape of a flower can tell you who might come to visit. Hummingbirds can reach deep inside long, thin flowers, but honeybees have rather short tongues. They need their nectar served in shallow golden bowls like those of the apple blossom. Bumblebees are rather heavy and need strong flowers that can hold their heft. If your flower, is your flower a tight cluster of many blossoms, such as Queen Anne's lace or dandelion, then it would be good for all those insects that like a sturdy perch. And now it's about smell and the time of opening. Does your flower smell sweet or musky? Does it have any smell at all? Bees like sweet smells and beetles like fruity, spicy scents. Night active moths love flowers as fragrant as perfume. Nectar bats like musky smells and some flies like rotten smells. Birds and butterflies use their eyes to find flowers instead of their sense of smell. And time of opening. Does your flower open in the daytime or the nighttime? If it, is at ni if it is a night bloomer, it is calling to a night moth or nectar bat. Day bloomers are calling to birds and insects who find food in the sunshine. And lastly, I will read this page right here, which is called Would You Believe? So these are some interesting facts. Flowers need pollinators to flourish and pollinators need flowers for nourishment. A pollinator is any animal or insect that helps a flower to trade pollen with another flower like itself. Most flowers need to trade pollen with each other so they can make seeds. These seeds will then grow into new plants. Here are some fascinating ways flowers call to their special pollinators. Many insects and birds see in ultraviolet light. That, this allows them to see nectar guides that are invisible to us. A flower that appears to us as one solid color can actually have a prominent two-toned bullseye at its center. This sends a loud and clear message, drink here. Some early spring flowers create their own heat to give visiting insects a toasty room for the night. This ability to generate heat is called thermogenesis. This warmth also helps spread a flower's scent. Some flowers of coffee, orange, and grapefruit plants offer bees a shot of caffeine with their nectar. The bees like caffeine and they return to the blossoms for refills. The caffeine helps the bees to remember where they found it. Flowers make their own electrical buzz that bees understand. This buzz can tell a bee how much nectar a flower has. In this way, flowers signal to bees which flowers offer a full slurp of nectar. Bees, birds, butterflies, moths, bats, and other pollinators are some of the most important creatures on earth. When they drink the nectar of flowers and or eat flower pollen, they help plants to make new flowers. Some of these flowers become the fruits, nuts, and vegetables that we eat every day. But pollinators are in trouble and we can help. Perfectly manicured green lawns that use toxic herbicides and pesticides offer nothing to pollinators. What they need instead are long grasses with an assortment of native species flowers. Ideally, the flowers will be lots of different colors and shapes and blooms throughout the, gr the growing season. Even a few flower pots or a window box can make a difference. And don't forget to include a fresh water source for your precious pollinators. To find out how to attract pollinators in your specific area, you can enter your zip code at pollinator.org slash guides dot htm, which would be something fun to do with your students. So I hope you can see um, Katie in this precious story and I think one thing we could definitely do is maybe go plant something, um, go plant a pollinator and then maybe you'll, we'll find Katie flying around in our, in our yard through these bugs. Thanks guys.